Wow, everything Kubernetes, infrastructure is code, open telemetry, it's been a KubeCon kind of white week. You're watching TechStrong Gang. All right, we're back here, last day of uh, Paris KubeCon. This is a special edition Tech Strong, Tech Strong Gang with a very special guest. Uh, let me introduce you to Savannah Peterson. Hey fam, nice to be here. Thanks <laughs> yeah, for having me Savannah, out. Savannah, thank Hello, you, man. man. I feel very lucky so, to be starting the day First people. of all, it's, it's yeah. good to have like, I'm tired of doing it with just me, Mike, and Mitchell. So <laughs> the gang it's actually is the good. wrong gang. Yeah, we got a real <laughs> gang this time. Um, so it's Friday in Paris. It's Friday morning, a weekend in Paris. I don't know about you, but I'm staying. Me I'm too. Looking, yeah. Oh, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm looking mine forward. On the front end. It's great. Oh. Yeah, this I know. is the best excuse to come to Paris it ever. Is. No doubt it about is. it. Yeah. I wish, you know, maybe they should do it here every year. Huh? I'd be so, okay. You know, speaking <laughs> about that, I'm hearing London in Europe next year. Yeah, yeah I believe that, that, that is. is. Yeah. So London's not bad. It's not Paris. But it, it's not bad. A lovely city, but it will be less full of cheese and fantastic wine. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. But it is better than Detroit. Yes. <laughs> so, or Chicago. Well, except for the music. Hey, except nothing for against the music. my friends except in Detroit and yeah, Chicago. No, yeah. Yeah, there was some good music there. <laughs> it's it's going to be interesting to see Blues. Salt Lake because that Salt Lake yeah. is not. I'm curious about that one. Thought of as a That's going to be an interesting yeah, experience. Yeah, it's in my backyard. I'm in Denver, so. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah but That's it's a good. world away from Denver to Salt Lake. It's, it's uh, a. <laughs> There's anyway, a lot of mountains between here. Yeah, there's <laughs> some mountains between there. Exactly. So, but let, let's talk. Let's talk uh, KubeCon, Kubernetes. So the first thing I wanted to talk about is it is KubeCon is this kind of Kubernetes everywhere, yeah. right? Yeah. We're seeing Kubernetes on the edge, Kubernetes on bare metal, which has always been a thing, but now it's, it, like people don't raise their eyebrow at it. They used to like, oh, you know, mm -hmm. but now it's, it's, it's accepted. Agree. It's, I'm wondering, what are, you, what are you hearing, seeing, thinking about it? Oh, it was interesting. We were talking, from, we were talking to Priyanka earlier this week, and, and she, like many are saying, that Kubernetes is having its Linux moment. And, and I will say, you know, I started working with Kubernetes four years ago, and people were still establishing their container strategy. They didn't know what was going to happen next. Yeah. And now, I feel like we've all made a decision, or at least a lot of the companies here have, mm -hmm. and particularly when we're talking about the AI stack. I think there's a lot of Kubernetes action. There's, there's, there's going to be a yeah. lot yeah. going yep. on there. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's interesting, I was speaking to um, Scott Johnston, CEO of Oh yeah, Docker. We, I chatted with him yesterday yep. as well. And Love Scott. And we spoke about exactly that. So sort of when Docker made the realization that Kubernetes yeah. was going to be it, and they pivoted to like a very developer-led focus and, and what Docker is today, it's not the container, right? Although it is, but um, I mean, it is a Linux kind of moment for It for is, Kube. I think. Um, what does it mean though for people out here, right? It's interesting, I think to that point is it's not just end users, practitioners adopting Kubernetes, all the providers, everybody's running Kubernetes underneath it's a their great whatever, point. right? Yeah. It's part of the fabric of the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So I, I hope that that knowledge and skill of operating Kubernetes and the complexity of it hopefully transforms to end users, practitioners using it to address the complexity issue. That's, still, that's always been that's the challenge. Still an issue to and it. it's still Kubernetes is still hard yeah. as hell, man. I'm yeah. sorry to say, but, it's but the truth. we're seeing it on the edge in cars. I was going to say, we've got a couple cars on the show floor. Yeah. Mercedes yeah, yeah. is Mercedes running Mercedes Kubernetes over, over there. there. And so it may be hard, but it's it's finding its way through. Does that mean I need to pull over and add a few more clusters to my yeah, uh, Kubernetes on my BMW well, you, yeah. so I can keep okay. going here on the Autobahn? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How funny would that be? Um, I mean, it's not far off. Yeah, yeah you know? <laughs> That's a little bit of truth. Yeah, you know yeah, what? Every exactly. time my car is doing, like I get the message we're doing an auto update, I start thinking about that. Is it? What version right. of Kubernetes is just the came out? Is containers that right. they're doing? What's going yeah, on with my K8s in this whip? My K A couple cylinders, my K8s? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I'm waiting for the idiot-like idiot K8s to come yeah. on on the deck. <laughs> yeah, ding, ding. <laughs> um, let, let, I wanted to talk about bare metal, though, because I brought that up, too. Look, I remember I, almost from the very first uh, KubeCon that I attended in Seattle, there were people running Kube on bare metal, but they were looked yeah. at as jerks. 
you know, quite frankly, right? They were like, what are you doing? Yeah, yeah, we're in the cloud, dude. The These were people running, and I'm not going to mention their name, IBM, but, <laughs> you know, they were running Kube on bare metal in traditional data centers. Uh, what was it, soft layer that they had bought? Mm -hmm. That was the soft layer, you know, a cloud native solution, run Kube on bare metal. And, and, but there was, there was an audience for that. There were some people who really, for whatever reason, security, government regulation, want, did not want to be in a multi-tenant yeah. type of environment. And they ran, it was just more economical to run it on a, you know, a, a bare metal individual the physical server. Right, right. But Cost is a big thing here. But now, I don't know if it's cost that's driving it or regulation compliance that's driving it, performance. Good point. Mm -hmm. But you know, when you talk, especially you find it when I'm talking to people about hybrid Kubernetes, yeah. hybrid cloud Kubernetes uh, deployments, yes, you do get the multi-cloud folks, but you're getting that private, public cloud kind of you know, you deployments, are. and a lot of times that private cloud's bare metal. And now some of the bigger cloud guys are offering Kube on bare metal as well. Mm -hmm. I also think the edge is a prime spot for it to get become that way because the edge, you don't want to complex, you want to reduce complexity, right? right. Simplicity and scalability. So is that a place we're going to see more bare metal you know, inside the car, at the edge of the network, you know, in the data center at the I edge? I think we will. All of that. So I think you're absolutely makes right. It makes sense. It does make sense. And People need that at speed. We need things quick. We no latency when it comes to edge. And I think, yeah, I think mm -hmm. you're absolutely right there. So let me be the spoil sport here. Oh, okay. Ooh. Right. So a little cold water. Tell on us. The what's what's next? For, what, what's next? When did, did, is, has Kubernetes peaked? And you know the problem with peaking, especially when you get my age, you realize that, right? <laughs> it's inevitably it, it is inevitably a hill down, right? <laughs> I think I think that it's more of. Uh, an Intel inside moment, right? Okay. You know, Intel used to have their stickers on those laptops and you knew that was your chip inside your computer. I think we're going to get to that stage. At, at a certain point, we're not going to talk about it as much. It's just going to be a part of the mm -hmm. products and But even solutions. Intel, and, and God bless them, we, right, we spoke with Arun and uh, some of yeah. the Intel folks, they're big, big supporters here at Open Source. But, you know, there is AMD today, and oh, God so knows there's this little and company, ARM. NVIDIA, mm -hmm. and ARM. And yeah. sure they're yeah. supported. You, you know, know, it's not, I mean, I, I grew up in an Intel monopoly for chips, yeah. right. right? All chips were Intel, uh, or virtually. But CPUs, for sure, yeah. No mm -hmm. pun intended, but, you know, is there, the, the issue is, though, I don't see anything on the horizon that replaces Kubernetes. No or yeah. even competes with Kubernetes. I mean, there's the guys I over here running that. Dapper. Yeah. yeah. And you can't see it because unfortunately I can't turn our cameras this way. We but all just lean left a We bit. can yeah. lean, see it but over there. you know, Dapper was something that was out there before. Yeah. Um, but you don't really see it much in the market. Uh, the guys over at Rancher, which is Seuss, mm -hmm. they at one time were looking to kind of do an alternate to Kube. Well, they do their lightweight, right? Well, yeah. they do lightweight K3, K3 yeah. and stuff, yeah, but yeah. no, they had a Kube alternate and they abandoned that, mm -hmm. right? The original Rancher OS had their own orchestrator. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so you, you can't talk about having a replacement for Kube when you can't even point to well, one, it's may, mythical. Maybe it isn't a replacement. Maybe you talked about yeah. the Linux moment. Yeah. Maybe it is the Linux of that layer and it's just going to be there. Be. That's actually you know? what I think. I don't think there, I, I think there was a little bit of competition as people were figuring out how to do containers. But right. now mm -hmm. I think there's sort of, this is the car we're driving. It's, and it's part of the stack. Exactly. It? It's part of the Interesting solution. Interesting stuff. Yeah. Well, all right. Kube, as far as the eye can see. <laughs> Kube ahoy. Yep. Is that what you see off the, off the deck of your yacht? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I, wish, I wish I was there the now. Dock, yes. Um, Kube ahoy. All right. We are, we're live in Paris for Tech Strong Gang. We'll be back in a moment.
All right, back here at Tech Strong Gang, we've got Mitch Ashley, we've got Savannah Peterson, we're talking KubeCon wrap up. Who, would, who came up with the name Open Tofu? You know, I had the exact same thought when I walked by their booth. Like, wasn't a branding kind of thing, I'm assuming, no? <laughs> People I mean, who eat tofu came up with Open Tofu. Do you think they're all vegetarians? So. Really? Be. You I think mean, that's, that's what it is? I don't know, whatever theory it is. Yeah, no, I, 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 it's funny you brought it up. I, I had the exact same thought. I mean, thought. they didn't call it uh, open b beef steak, so, right. you know, what, what is it? Open lobster. <laughs> open lobster. You know, I mean, you know what? Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> hey, no, we should grab the people behind the Open Tofu Project, yeah. like the maintainers. Maybe there's We'd a story the there. There must yeah. be Maybe it's supposed to be like an, a, a meat alternative. Mm. Yeah. Okay. I, I don't know, but Need substitute. Right? But Maybe there's a sustainability play. Who knows? I mean, it's not it's not the name I would have picked for it. But in any event, it's here and it's real. Yes. And it's kind of revitalized infrastructure as code. In infrastructure as code. Mm -hmm. it, I thought that had its moment in the sun, right? When we had Puppet and Chef yep. and Ansible Terrible, and these kind of things and, and Terraform. Exactly. But I thought those had become woodwork kind of stuff, right? Yeah. Like just. But no, uh, Open Tofu has has given it a jolt of, of dare I say, excitement, <laughs> right? <laughs> About tofu. You dare. Yeah, you go I for dare. it, Alan. We, we validate oh dare. you. Oh, dare. Yeah. <laughs> so, so it's there. What's going to be interesting is at the same time this week, we saw a, a bunch of reports that HashiCorp has been, had, well, first of all, Mitchell's left as of yeah. December, mm -hmm. and that they've engaged a banker yeah. to oh. potentially sell the business. Of course, at the last uh, KubeCon, the big news was they had changed their licensing. Right. right? And which kind of gave rise to the whole open tofu thing, right? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, nature abhors a vacuum. I think there was an opportunity there. And go figure, we filled it with tofu. But um, Of all things. Of all things. <laughs> but that's not the only innovation we've seen here on infrastructure is code. I've seen one company, uh, they call it generative infrastructure is code. Like AI. Right. You know, making it easier to do. There's another company just, you know, a few doors, a few doors, a few booths down from us here. We're all neighbors now here. In yeah, Paris. I we, get we it. We live here. This uh, is a part of our lifestyle. Yeah, it's a community. Those are just our neighbors. It's cool. Right. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I'll look back and see their name. Spacelift. <laughs> okay, Spacelift. Also an infrastructure is code play with a little bit of an AI twist and some I, other I really stuff. I really found that interesting about their story is, is basically, well, two things. One is how do you scale infrastructure's code? And think about right. software code and how do you manage that on so many variations, Great so many point. environments. Yeah, yeah. Think about the same, same for the infrastructure's code layer and the ability to have kind of one place to manage that policy, security, all of that kind right. of thing. I thought the that other, single plane of glass. Yeah. Exactly. Now the other thing, interesting thing, and I don't know if they're addressing this yet, is where does that fit into the work, DevOps workflow pipeline, right? Because That's a great question. You know, it, versions of that, window application yeah. dependencies and infrastructure code dependencies and all of that, it speaks right to the Git, GitOps, right, that we've mm -hmm. talked about for a long time. But that doesn't solve it all, just putting it into the repository. So some interesting problems, I think, to still to solve. Challenges yeah. Well, I. I you know, to me, that's infrastructure is code at scale. At scale. Yeah. And that's really, maybe that's the... I think that's the next moment. When you're talking about that little hype blip that happened before, yeah. I think it was a, a, a marker of, you know, letting us know that this is where the market was going, but I feel like now, to your point, it's it's vital. It's a part Absolutely. of the deal. Absolutely. I, yeah. I get it. Um, I, it'll be interesting to see how it plays out, not just from one KubeCon to the next, but in the market. Yeah, we'll, exactly. We'll, we'll see how it goes. And, and again, I think if it's successful, it'll fade back into the woodwork. Exactly. Right? Yeah, become part of the fabric. Yeah, it won't be do. such a topic. It'll just be how things are done. Mm -hmm. I think we'll yeah. also have to see, I think this Hashi, so, so let me just say up front, right? I was, I was a big fan of Mitchell, right? Mitchell Hashimoto, I don't know how much you know or how well you know Mitchell. Not, not, not as well as you do, I would suspect. So Mitchell yeah. Hashimoto started HashiCorp, I think he was 18 years old. I mean, he was, he's he's impressive. a kid. Yeah. And they basically built two or three billion dollar product lines. Oh, yeah. Right? Uh, Terraform being yep. one. Gauntlet, Vault. Mm -hmm. Vault. A whole bunch of and stuff. And there was the, the first one, not Viper. 
No, nah, it's the environment. I know what you're talking about. It's a, it's a security-related one. It's um, whatever. He built at least three billion dollar product lines there. It's amazing. Fantastic. Now he's out. And and Mitch, you and Mitchell and I have been in venture back startups. Probably as long as you've been alive, I'm, I'm afraid to <laughs> that, say. You know, that 30 rock years. has rolled down a few yeah. hills. Yeah. Oh, um, as they way. say. <laughs> you know, when the founder leaves, it's a very precar oh, precarious is. time. You know, who's going to be the? You need different talent. To it's take a cultural it to the next moment. Level. It's a product moment. Yeah, it is. And a, and a business moment. And a Absolutely. Moment, right? Exactly. And at the yeah. same time, it's a public entity. Yeah. Yeah. Public company. So I, I think that's going to be a great story to watch too, because Terraform. Look, open tofu's great. They forked Terraform. Right. I'm reminded, you know, Mitchell and I were in the security game back in 2004, I think it was 2003. Ron Guler and Renaud mm -hmm. Dreisen over a tenable, closed source Nessus. Well, from 2.7 on, right? Mm -hmm. and said, hey, it's still free, but it's no longer open source. And everyone said, oh, that's the death knell. What a stupid move by them. They'll, they, you know, yeah. it's going to be the end of Nessus. Well, I, you know, I'm friends with Ron. He's done pretty well He's for done himself. done all right for himself. Yeah, yeah. Um, Not too shabby. So, yeah. No. Yeah. You know, and, and so they were wrong, right? It, it turned out that not being open source wasn't important. It may very well be the case with Terraform that be. this is a... It's a great point. A fireworks moment for the tofu Red Hat bank. Linux hasn't gone away, and they've changed their models. Yeah. Exactly. You know. So it, I, I think that'll be interesting to see too. Is does Terraform remain dominant, or does Open Tofu continue that momentum into this whole infrastructure as code? Hopefully, we can talk about it in Salt Lake. We'll see. We're going to need something yeah. to talk about yeah. in Salt Lake. I'm sure we'll find um, something. Because yeah. there's not going to be nice <laughs> restaurants with wine like there is oh, here. I know. Um, anyway. <laughs> Maybe we should just keep KubeCon in Paris every I'm year. I'm all for that. I 100% yeah. agree the with this. the next three to five. That would be, CNCF, that would be if you're listening, if do it. we are here for it. Buy also, is this the most times now. you've said tofu in a broadcast before? Absolutely. Yes. We should like, well, we can't because it's morning here. But I was going to say, we should be doing shots <laughs> every time we, we say tofu. It's, 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 drink at up. Home, it's, Woo, you know, bars are yeah, closing yeah. at home, so we can still do it. Yeah, it's at home. You're not wrong. You're not wrong about that. All right. Hey, we'll be we're we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna take our tofu. We'll be back in a second on Tech Strong Gang. Hey, we're back here, Paris, Tech Strong Gang, talking tofu. <laughs> Infrastructure is code. Wine and cheese. Exactly the food that we're people not, talk about in Paris not. is tofu. <laughs> you don't come to Paris for the tofu. But yeah. um, no, seriously, our, our next block, our next topic for gang today is uh, what is our next topic in gang, for gang today? It's the Open Telemetry Open Project. Yeah. For those of you who don't know, Open Telemetry is the second largest of the 180 projects mm -hmm. in CNCF. Yeah. Wow. So, and, and if you're counting Lots at home, of contributors. It's, yeah, it's Kubernetes, yeah. Open Telemetry. You know who number three is? I, I don't. don't. Argo. Oh, Argo, that oh, makes sense. Oh, that makes yeah. sense. Argo, we should have known that. I know. Coming yeah. up with a bullet. I was bullet. holding that in my back pocket. Yeah. <laughs> case, okay. You know, we, we just wanted that one to look good. Yeah. I, yeah. You friend. wanted it to be open tofu. I, I know. Did, Drink yes. up. Yeah, next All right. insult. That'll be changed <laughs> um, by then. <laughs> but, no, but open telemetry <laughs> is, is huge. It has an it army, huge. literally an army of contributors. Truly. Um, and not only that, it has that along with Prometheus, which is probably in mm -hmm. the top five yeah, as say. well. Have have become the de facto foundation of an entire ecosystem. Yes, there are very few observability vendors today who aren't on that open telemetry. Uh, very few. Yeah, the ones and that are probably stuck in monitoring, right? Or yeah, something. yeah. Who yeah. still call? Right, Things they don't call themselves. Right. Yeah. yeah. But if you think about it, that is the ultimate open source model, right? For a foundation. Totally. We, we are, we are going to lay the foundation, we're going to lift all the boats, and then people compete from there. You know, we're giving you this base. 
go forth and multiply, right? Go, go do your yeah. thing from there. And, and we're seeing a ton of innovation, mm -hmm. but all built on that base. Well, you know, to the, to the model, and it, it's sort of the ideal open source project because the contributors all recognize that's not our value. What we do on top of that is. Yeah. And they kind of did that again in a smaller way because a, a bunch of different vendors are doing this profiling capability, right? That's a great point. How do you yeah. tune? How do you know what your performance characteristics are going to be of your app, of your mm -hmm. stack? And they said, why are we all, why are nine or 10 of us doing this? Let's set that back into, into OTEL and then add our analytics on top of it. So they're continuing that model, recognizing mm -hmm. there's more opportunities to say, we're not going to differentiate there. We're going to differentiate what we do with that data. Yeah. No, I think, and, and, it, and it's having a moment. We, we were talking a lot about it in Amsterdam a year ago. Yes. A uh, very hot topic, but I feel, to, to your point, I mean, we're at, we're at an adoption peak with some of these things where it, it is becoming ubiquitous, just like mm. Kubernetes to a degree. Well, and, and I think it almost is the end. So, again, it, it, I, having, I agree. having done KubeCons for a long time now, almost nine years, I bet, um, not counting COVID. <laughs> but, you know, it used to be these events were very dev-centric. And very Kubernetes-only centric, right? Yes. Yes. Amsterdam last year was the first time where I really looked around and said, you know what? It's about ops. Mm -hmm. and, and it was Agreed. open telemetry and observability that I think was really kind of leading that charge. Mm -hmm. I think open telemetry is the engine or the locomotive pulling the train Ooh, I like this analogy. You like that one, I like huh? That. Yeah. Uh, Painting the picture. No, this there is we good. go. Uh, yeah. You know, the locomotive <laughs> pulling the train of ops and observability yeah, yeah, within this whole ecosystem, right? Because without it, you don't have that. You don't have that. You'd well, still yeah. just be doing devs. You have one of the leaders, Splunk, whose acquisition just got closed. Right. And Cisco. And, yeah, yeah. The Cisco. Big, you big know, little. Already successful there. in observability. Now a big acquisition. So you know they haven't gone wrong by going hotel. No, look, move. there yeah. are, so Splunk is obviously a heavyweight, but Grafana is down the block here. I was going to bring Logs. up Grafana, yeah, yeah, yeah. they're all, I mean, there's some. There's some players. There are players in here. New Relic is, yeah. is using it now. Absolutely. And they're from, the, you know, New Relic is from the old guard, the yeah, APM days, yeah. right? Yeah. The community around open telemetry is really impressive, too. I mean, those contributors, yes. everyone's so excited. It, 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 there's going to be maintainers there, so I feel like there's a lot of trust in that project as well. There absolutely is. There's, um, what was the company service now, boy? Light, light, light not, Step. Light yep. Step. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're all in, because yeah. they yeah. were kind of the, you know, the initiators. The new yeah, yeah, project. Yeah, yeah. Some uh, distributed tracing capabilities. And yeah, they put tracing in. It, it's interesting stuff. It bodes well. I, you know, I mean, I, I said in half just before the, about the 180 uh, projects in open uh, in CNCF and, and they're not done, mm -hmm. right? Uh, we interviewed Arun Gupta. Yeah, yeah. I know and Arun, Arun yeah. yeah, and he's the chairman, of course, of CNCF. You can ch catch that out. You can catch that uh, interview. But he said, you know, their philosophy is let as many flowers bloom. And I'm kind of runny nose here, but um, <laughs> are your allergies re responding? I don't to those know flowers? what it. Yeah, is must, that, is is that let a flowers? million flowers bloom. It is bloom. springtime in Paris. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, but. Is it CNCF 250? Is it CNCF 500? Is it CNCF 1000? I don't know. Right? I've been wondering about this too. Yeah. Is there a never? Is there a limit where it's too many projects? And and so you'll have open telemetry, which is going to suck a lot of oxygen. A monolith to a degree, yeah. Versus, I don't want to say tofu again. Uh, yeah. Versus another one, you know, another project right. that maybe doesn't get enough oxygen. I, you know, that's something to think about too. Yeah, it is. we'll see. I don't know what's going to happen. You yeah, know, it's, it's a successful model. Yes, it is. Can it, can it succeed at the next level of scale? Kind of the same question. And about doesn't Kubernetes need to. And or is else. it Excuse is it meant to be this size? Oh, you're good. Yeah. Okay. Well, but but to your point on that, yeah. Savannah, look at like CDF. Yeah. Right. The CDF. And we do we do a a yeah. video series for them yeah. every delivery. month called CD Pipelines. Oh, nice. And, you know, we do our best to support the CDF. Yeah. But they're having, I mean, quite frankly, they have a hard time. Yeah. They have a hard time getting out from the shadow yeah. of CNCF. It, it happened even with open SSF. I believe that. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, we had that conversation yeah. yesterday. So yeah. does... 
does the, the, the success of CNCF itself deprive the other daughter sister foundations of, of oxygen, right? And, and so that's why they keep putting more projects into CNCF than these other foundations, which only kind of, you know, the rich get richer, the poor get poorer, but also puts more strain on CNCF. I wonder if, and maybe this is happening and I just, I'm not aware of it, but one of the things Otel also did really well was projects joining together, right? Yeah. Distributor tracing, et cetera, were, were different projects. And that combining things, I think is part of that strength that they yeah. had. So maybe there's, maybe that's the model. It isn't just, you want to become the next hotel of uh, CNCF. You've got to bring people with you in other projects and there's combine some forces. things to combine. I think that's actually a great you know. point. Yeah, because I mean, when you're looking at people independently choosing to contribute to these projects. This isn't, open source is a pretty wild thing when you think about the community in general. Mm -hmm. So to your point, stronger together, as long as it's all complimentary. Yeah. Yeah. Let's collaborate. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. All right. Well, we're stronger together, at least. Strong. Thank you all Absolutely. for having Absolutely. Let's wrap up here. <laughs> um, it's been, all kidding aside, it has been an amazing KubeCon. It really has. Paris has been an amazing post-city. I post would say city. insane KubeCon. It's, it yeah, really it's, insane. I it's mean, been crazy. It, the energy in here <laughs> the has the buzz just been is back. awesome. I the haven't felt this there. since yeah. San Diego, yeah, which was right before COVID. Yeah. Yeah. No, we're, we're back. Yeah, we're definitely back. Paris back, has been baby. an amazing host thank you, of Paris. KubeCon. Yeah, thank you, Paris. Thank you. Yeah. Could, could you imagine yeah. what it's going to be like for the Olympics here in three months? No, I don't want to. Yeah. I'll tell you, are the cab drivers. Are we going to find a sponsor to. and get hey, some coverage of the I Olympics? I was just going to say, you if you could get me a sponsor, first. <laughs> I'll wear your T-shirt with everything. That's all I can tell you. They're like, oh, my God. I don't want to. What's it going to be like? I mean, it is going to be madness. Yeah. It is going to be it's absolute, a, yeah, it's it's gonna be absolute fun. delicious madness. Paris in July for the Olympics. Uh, Hashtag dreams. Those, yeah. those grapes are crazy. ripening on the vine. Um, <laughs> anyway, hey, we hope you've enjoyed our special Tech Strong gangs <laughs> while we're here. Stay tuned. Well, by the time you're watching this, KubeCon will be over, but We've been streaming live all week as well. All of those uh, live streamed videos are available up on techstrong.tv. Check them out. And uh, thanks for joining in. Au revoir from Good Paris. Day, Savannah, thank, thank you. you. Hey, thank Au you revoir. both. We're out of here. Cloud Native Now is the web's leading resource for the growing cloud native ecosystem. CloudNativeNow.com is your destination for news, thought leadership, features, and webinars on cloud-native architecture, Kubernetes, serverless, cloud-native application development, microservices, service mesh, cloud-native security, and more. Stay on the cutting edge of modern application development at CloudNativeNow.